G'day folks, in today's video we're going to be running through a few basic rules of thumb for plumbing in aquaponic system and also run through a couple of the components I have laid out over on the ironing boards. So the first rule of thumb we're going to look at today involves the water exchange rates of the fish tank and the pipe sizes required to get that water moving through the system. Basically, um, how fast should the water move through the fish tank before it goes through the different biofilters, in my case a moving bed bioreactor and a grow bed to process the ammonia through to nitrite and then nitrate. Well a general rule of thumb is that the water in this tank which is we'll say 260 gallons or 1000 litres or roughly around about 260 gallons, the water in there should be exchanged at least one and a half times an hour. So for a thousand litre tank at least 1500 litres of water should be pumped into the tank which in turn means 1500 litres would be pumped out via the solids lifting outlet in the centre there down through into the various filters and eventually the grow beds. What I mean is that the water is coming in under pressure here and it is forcing the water out through the solids lifting outlet through this drain pipe work under gravity. Now if this is too small uh, it'll basically back up in your fish tank and cause it to overflow. So a basic rule of thumb I follow is anything over a thousand litres an hour or 265 gallons an hour I like to run these 50 millimetres or two inch um, drain pipes all the way down. I use a food grade pressure um, pipe that we get here in Australia and that goes out through all the different filters and eventually makes its way into the sump tank down below the last filter there. But you can get away with slightly smaller under a thousand litres an hour or 260-ish gallons an hour but I probably wouldn't go much under a 40 millimetre in a large system like this. That's an inch and a half for you folks over the big pond. So yeah definitely pays to oversize this stuff um, just so you don't have any water backing up and overflowing your fish tank. And while we're talking oversizing I also think it is a great idea to oversize the pump that you use. Now this one here is almost 18,000 litres an hour or that many gallons an hour and it is pumping out or it's basically set up as a split flow so what we have is we have a branch there a T that T there goes off to the fish tank and the other hose work over the back goes off to some grow beds and we'll talk about that hose work in a minute. With this pump 18,000 litres an hour is definite overkill but I am lucky because it has this little control box where I can restrict the flow by limiting the amount of power that runs to the pump. So it's basically a variable speed pump and I never really have it much over three for this one and the previous system with three beds. And the beauty of having this little fella down here oversized also means that if you decide to expand in the future, add more grow beds, there is more than enough um, capacity within the pump to up the flow and add another grow bed on down the line. So before we get on to a couple of tips, tricks and pointers on the plumbing fittings and pipe and hose, I just wanted to remind you folks who are new to aquaponics that I do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginners Guide available, 1995 US, links up there and down in the description. Uh, it covers pretty much all everything from what is aquaponics, uh, how to cycle a system, plants, a couple of pointers there. Not only that, it gives you ideas on how to make your own components with a small filter and a radial flow settler as well tossed in, and also how to make your own small basic aquaponic system so you can start growing your own fantastic tasty veg and fish in your own backyard. And not only that, you can also ask me questions through the guide. There's a little button that you click on there, and yeah, I should get back to you within 24 hours unless I'm busy moving to the new farm so do check it out and also another reminder we do have a little shop on the go that sells aquaponics fittings and also the awesome Queensland nut buster so you can check that out down below in the links as well so now we'll hook into a couple of pointers on fittings and pipes so we're back around at the fish tank drain for the first pointer and that is to try and make all your 90 degree bends a sweeping bend. Now if this was to come out as a harsh 90 degree you end up losing some of the velocity of the water especially as it's under gravity because it hits that wall tends to back up a little bit before it re-diverts downwards. This sweeping bend it hits the back wall there's a bit of an angle and it takes it down. Now this little uh, unit here has been made by two 45 degree elbows that I've glued together a small little section of pipe in there but there are sweeping bend fittings available. Uh, when I made this there weren't many in Australia and the ones I found were uh, prohibitively 
expensive, we'll put it that way. So um, that's something I'm looking to stock in my shop, by the way, once I find a decent supplier. But yeah, a sweeping bend on anything where it is gravity flow water in particular, definitely helps the water keep traveling on. And down the bottom there, I also have another sweeping 90 degree. And there is one in the base of the radial flow settler where the standpipe is connected and diverts straight up inside that stilling well. Now on the same theme as the sweeping bends, you can see I use a lot of hose in the system here. Uh, the reason being is it just makes it really easy to get the water moving around corners without having harsh 90 degree angles. And you can pretty much all, yeah, it's a little bit saggy there, but it goes right out to the end inlet in that bed there. And even though this pipe does have a couple of little lumps and bumps on the inside bore, I find because of the slow flow rate we have going into the grow beds compared with say if it was going into the fish tank, it really doesn't impede the flow whatsoever. So while I like to use the hose uh, just because of the flexibility it gives me, you can get more rigid forms like the PVC pipe that most people you'll see online use. And they use that to plumb the water from the pump all the way out to the grow beds and fish tank. And you can also use things like this rural grade irrigation line. It comes in a rural grade as well as a drinking water grade. And they attach nicely onto these little barb fittings which I'm going to show you in a little while. But the PVC, yeah, it does work. It's got a very smooth bore and one pointer I would give you, even though I <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Uh, this fitting down the bottom here, I uh, managed to get a 40 mil or inch and a half fitting onto the pump. Ideally, I should be running a 40 mil line or inch and a half line out as far as I can, and then breaking it down into smaller little tee-offs on the one inch. But as this little stand here had hoses screwed onto those end threaded fittings, it wasn't really an issue with this build um, that I had in the past. And also due to the fact that this pump was oversized, I think, what was this one? This is a 15,000 litre an hour pump, I could manage to um, throttle the flow back a fair bit. And just quickly on the retarding of that flow going from the 40 down to the one inch, it really doesn't damage these pumps because they run on a magnetic impeller. So the parts aren't actually touching and wearing. So yeah, just a bit of a pointer there. Uh, you can throttle the flow, but ideally if you wanted to maintain the maximum flow rate per hour, you would use the diameter pipe that suits the pump outlet fitting. So now we'll have a bit of a look at some of the fittings and we'll start with the PVC. Uh, they come, you know, in all configurations. You've got your typical 90 degree, a 45 degree T fitting, and then you've got straight couplers to join two straight lengths of pipe. And you also have things like this fancy Y fitting, uh, bit hard to find but there are a few retailers out there that do sell them here in Australia. Now when it comes to connecting these guys you can go down the route of the glue just gluing the fittings together but another method that I like that we can see over here on our radial flow settler is the tape and screw method. So basically what I do is I wrap some Teflon tape, plumbing tape around the pipe and then zap a 316 stainless steel screw in there and what that means is when I want to recycle this pump or do some maintenance, I can zap that screw out, pull the fitting off, and yeah, it's easy enough to get in there and do whatever I want to do, recycle the part or, you know, do a little maintenance on the system and then just rewrap it with some new Teflon tape, put it through, try and match the holes up and zap the screw through again. You might be able to make out the little screw just there on the solids lifting pipe and that's because the rambunctious fish at one point in time are actually knocking that standpipe off of there. So that is another trick that I like to do. While we're looking at this, you can also get valves. This is a Sand King brand valve. I really like these guys, but you can also get these straight little um, red wing ones that are very popular here in Australia. I find these ones can get a little bit tight on the turn after a while if they're left in either open or closed position for too long. These guys here, they tend to be a little bit more, yeah, a little bit easier to turn. The other bonus is these guys have removable handles. So if you put it in a situation, say like on your radial flow settler down the bottom, or even on your fish tank to make it easy to empty, if you shut down your system every winter, like some of you folks in the frozen north of America and Canada, you can leave the handle off so no kids can come along and basically drain your system. So I think these little um, units here are fantastic. Fantastic. And as far as I know, they are available um, around the world. So that's my um, top tip for a valve if you can get them. Oh, the other thing is these two end sections here, they undo. So if you end up with dodgy washers or whatever, a bit of a leak in there, you can fix it. These guys here, while I've never had them leak, you don't have that opportunity. Uh, one bonus is though, if you do want to reclaim this fitting, you can actually unscrew that, uh, take it off, hit it with the heat gun, pull the fitting out, and you're not going to distort the washer 
or the uh, nylon ball in there either. So yeah, they're just a bit of a pointer with those ones there. Another fancy fitting you can get with these guys is a uh, backflow prevention device. Basically the water goes in there. There we go, now you can see it. It hits against this little flappy thing here and opens it up and the water can go through. And the water, um, if for whatever reason the flow stops coming through this way, pushes against there and creates a seal. Where this would come in handy would be, say, a situation like this. Uh, the old owner, Paul, g'day Paul if you ever watch this, uh, he had the Venturi, or an inlet, sorry, um, coming in through the side wall of the tank, through that point there. So between the pump and this part here, he had one of these backflow prevention devices, and that meant that if the power ever went out, the water would not flow back through, all that much water anyway, it wouldn't flow back through down into the sump tank and, you know, potentially causing a flooding issue somewhere down the track. Something handy to think about. So these PVC pipes come in all sizes. As you can see here, there's a reducing bush in there. So that's a 25 millimeter or one inch. And this is a three quarter inch or 20 mil. And that reducing bush allows me to put this pipe in that valve. And on the other end, we have a reducing fitting. So we have 25 mil pipe goes in there and a 20 mil pipe comes out the other side. And that is basically the configuration of pipe I use as a stand pipe in these grow beds. So we have a reducing fitting there and a 20 mil pipe there. So in this instance, what that means is because there's a larger diameter, more water falls over there, makes a water lock um, occur a lot faster. And yeah, basically just helps your bell siphon kick on and off a lot better. And you can thank Mr. Afnan for that design. This is basically a, just a little variation on his awesome siphon that most people use in aquaponics today. These reducers actually come in all sizes. So we can just see over here on a fitting we'll look at at the moment. You can see a 25 millimeter pipe going into a 25 to 40 mil reducer reducer and then that 40 mil reducer going into a 50 millimeter fitting. They come in all shapes and sizes so you can go up or down depending on what your design calls for. And just to let you know these pipes come in a range of sizes so the typical ones that I like to use are the 20 mil or three quarter inch, 25 mil or one inch then straight up to the two inch but you can also get uh, 40 millimeter and 32 millimeter which is inch and a half and inch and a quarter as well uh, but I just like to use those three standard sizes in my builds. So now we will look at joining PVC pipe. Now this little jobby here is a great little coupler for those people who don't measure twice and cut once. There's little rubber bushes on the inside of both ends. These little caps unscrew, you put your pipe through, screw them onto here and you can make a join. You can have a short section of pipe end there and a section of pipe end there and you can make a nice watertight join. Now there is a very similar one to that called the barrel union. As you can see here, this has two sections and a nut on it. So you glue into there and into there, um, screw the nut on, and that allows you to take these two sections apart. Uh, just quickly, a huge shout out and thank you to Tim who donated these fittings along with a load of others, like some of these screens down here to the cores. Thank you very much, mate. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, let me know if I can ever help you out, as I said the other day. Uh, but just to give you a bit of a look at one of these in action, this this is a practical application. Down here on my pump, I use a barrel union in case the pump dies, which has happened to me a few times now. I can just unscrew that, take it off that pump and throw it on another pump and we're right to go. The beauty of having the barrel union set up this way is if the other pump only has a 25 mil fitting or say it's got a two inch fitting, as long as I have a one inch barrel union stuck on the mounting section, I'll pop this on and swap the pump out. So the other way that I like to join PVC pipes is by using these little rubber cuffs. This section here is from the radial flow settler going into the moving bed bioreactor in the old system. These make it really easy to join. And like this little fitting here, the pipes don't have to match up in the middle. The pipes here actually just end there and there which you can probably see if it's not too glary on the inside there. And you probably noticed this one over here when I was connecting the radial flow settler to the outlet on the fish tank. The reason being was I wasn't 100% sure of the levels of the ground here when I was designing this. So yeah, I just thought a rubber cuff would be a lot better, especially if we get a little bit of movement from either the fish tank settling or these filters on this little stand that I've made. Another place those cuffs come in handy is connecting drain work. On the inside of this radial flow settler, just like all my others, I use a small 25 millimeter cuff to join the drain assembly in the center of the filter to this little evacuation drain work here that, yeah, connected to a pump, moves the solids out to the fruit trees around the house. I could have put a barrel union in there, but these rubber cuffs, as I said before, 
allow you to fudge the length of the pipes a little bit. Not only that, because it's flexible, I've actually got it on a bit of an angle. So the rubber uh, pushes at the end of drain fitting down on the base just to create a better draw for all those solids to be collected and pumped out of the filter. Now moving right along, you can get other attachments like these little screens. Thanks again, Tim and the boys. Um, these little screens here, and they come in really handy if you've got, say, a dual drain system. So what we could do here is collect all the solids from the solids lifting outlet, and I could have a little drain beside it just with this going out, and this would collect the clean water from the top of the fish tank and take it directly out to the grow beds itself while all those solids will be picked up and delivered out into my solids capturing device. Uh, these little screens would prevent any small fish escaping via this method. Not only that, it would stop any feed that's floating on the surface from being collected and taken out to the drain. You also get these little foot valve screens. I've used them a bit. Um, I've actually used them as a fingling screen on solids lifting outlets before. They do a fantastic job. Uh, just cover them with a bit of um, shake cloth or mesh when the fish are really small and can fit through the gaps but yeah definitely a very handy thing to have around now if you can't find these you can also make your own um, simply a drill through the end of an end cap will do the job uh, this one here I think had some biomedia on the other side of it that I wanted to stop being sucked out. So just a couple of large holes there and away we go. Uh, this one here is actually a bottom drain from our original biofilter, the large one. And again, just to stop the biomedia being sucked out of there when I wanted to uh, clean the solids waste off the base. And you can also make more elaborate ones out of sections of PVC pipe like I have in our moving bed bioreactor. That stops any of that media, as you can see there, from being sucked out along with the water. Uh, down into the sump tank and making a huge mess down there. So all you need is an end cap. This one here it doesn't have any holes in it, but I could have put a few holes in it. And then just a single joiner onto the pipe through the uni seal in the wall of the drum and out you go. So yeah, you're not just limited to fittings, you can do it on pipe sections as well. Now on to the other fittings. Now what we have here are the barbed fittings that I use on the hoses and also that ag line. On the ag line, these guys make a very tight fit so I don't even worry about putting um, hose clamps on there. There's just no way they're coming off. You need to actually cut them off. Now the style of fitting you can get with these guys is varied. As you can see there, we have a tail adapter for a nut and tail which I'll show you in a tick or just a plain elbow. Uh, you can also get tees. This is a tee with a reducer from a one inch or a 25 mil down to a three quarter inch or 20 mil and you can pop the different sections of pipe so I could have that one running in there and then connect the end to this section of hose work over here which is a 20 mil flexible hose so very adaptable goes all the way down to a half inch or 13 mil which is what we have running the system up on the deck uh, just a small little pump with just 13 mil pipe is all we need these little barb fittings as well as the pvc pipes can also be used for air not just water i've found this little jobby here 13 mil barb fitting down to the airline uh, creates a very airtight seal I haven't had any issues with it leaking around the gaps or whatever, so uh, probably just due to the, the low volume pumps that we run in the backyard system, but just something else to keep in mind. You can also get different styles of pipe work. So this is just the reinforced line. You can also get a rural style line that is 20 mil as well. This being the inch one, it fits on the larger fittings. So very diverse and yeah, again, you can basically take these down from a one inch down to all the way to a half inch if you want. So all the fittings are out there, different threads for different sizes, absolutely fantastic to work with. Now why I really like them is because they allow us to have these very cheap quick connects. I think these are like a couple of bucks if that compared with some of the more expensive PVC fittings that you can get. So I can basically stick this in a section of hose, making sure there's a washer in there, come over to my PVC fitting, all the other BSB plastic fittings, and just screw that straight on and have a watertight connection in no time. That's why I have it hooked up down here. If I ever have any issues with the pumps, just have to undo that. I can lift the whole T arrangement out, put this one back in, screw them back on, and we're up and cooking again. Now, just a quick point up with this hose work. As you can see, she has a lot of jewelry, meaning hose clamps. Now, technically speaking, I should only need the hose clamps up to the switch off valve, which is just there. 
uh, because that is where the bulk of the pressure is. If I turn that valve off and just having the water run to the fish tank, this is where we'd spring a leak. Now on the other side, I really don't need all that extra jewelry, mainly because the valves are always open running into the beds, or at least two or three of them are. You never turn off all your grow beds individually. So there is a pressure release on the other side of that valve. So definitely use the hose clamps anywhere to a valve. Um, I've got one or a series of them. Actually, I've only got one down there. Um, one on the pressure side of that valve there that runs out to the fish tank. And yeah, it's, it just saves you uh, basically blowing a line and losing all your water out of your sump. Fish should be good if you're using a solids lifting outlet, but you still don't want to lose all your precious nutrient rich water. Now, when it comes to putting holes in tanks and grow beds and running your pipe work through, there's a few different options. You could go with the straight PVC fittings if they've got a large enough lip to slip an O-ring or a washer in there and just uses the threaded male and female fitting and then slip fittings on the other side that you can either drill and screw or glue to your heart's content. Uh, you can get straight ones, you can get 90 degree ones. Uh, the problem I found with thinner, flimsy IBC beds, stuff like this, when wiggled around, can stretch the plastic and cause issues. That's why I prefer on the bottom of my IBC grow beds, the um, bulkhead fittings or tank fittings. I typically use a 25 millimeter one with some sort of reducing fitting on the inside and then run a um, 25 millimeter or one inch uh, drain on the underside and have a 20 mil or three quarter inch standpipe as you saw before. So really great for flimsy sided tanks. Uh, the other way you can go is with a uni seal. Now these uni seals are pretty much for what I use, especially on the 50s as you've seen. Uh, they just make life a whole lot cheaper to tell you the truth. I priced out, this is a 40 millimeter version or an inch and a half, but for the two inch version I priced it out and it came in at just under $50 uh, to get a basic uh, uh, bit of water flowing through the wall of a tank. Now with this one here, with a uni seal, which I do sell, link above and down below, disclaimer, um, with this uni seal, all I need is this uni seal, a small section of pipe, and two of these, one to push on the pipe on the inside and one on the outside. So I just have a little bit of a real world comparison between the uni seals and the bulkhead fittings. If I was to run a straight joiner on the inside, like I do there, as well as the outside, just to keep things simple, I'd be looking at just over $16 for two of these couplings and a uni seal. Now, if I was to run a bulkhead with the same sort of arrangement, I'm looking at pretty much, well, $47 a pop or a little bit over. So five of the uni seals, so one for the fish tank and two for each of the drums here, five all up, I'd be looking at just over $81. But for five of these little systems in 50 mil or two inch, I'd be looking at 235. So for that reason alone, I really do think the backyarder can save a little bit of coin by using the fantastic uni seals. And mind you, that's without freight, you know, because as I said, I do sell these, link down below. Uh, these uni seals just make it a lot cheaper. And seriously, I don't have any issues with the uni seals leaking as long as the holes are drilled to the correct size. They're clean, so there's no swarf on the inside, creating a little bit of a void. As you can see, this plumbing is just freestanding. The uni seal at the top is taking the weight, and yeah, there's nothing holding it up down below. It does also help that this wall is nice and thick. It's over six millimeters, or over, I think that's around about quarter of an inch in thickness. Whereas I've seen people pop them in IBCs and I've done it myself. The wall is very thin. It can get down to two millimeters in some sections and that extra strain and weight can cause the plastic itself to malform so the uni seal doesn't fail. In fact, it's the plastic that's failing. So a quick easy fix to stop any leaks occurring with your IBC pipe work is to put a little stand just underneath the bottom drain and that just supports the weight from that pipe. And yeah, your uni seal should stay nice and watertight as long as you've drilled a correct size hole and kept the swarf out of there. So once more, yes, I do sell these, um, as well as a few other bits and pieces that uh, help support the channel and pay the bills so I can keep making these videos. So I really do appreciate all you folks who do buy bits and pieces from us. Now onto the last bit of plumbing that I wanted to cover today, and that is the bell siphon. Now there is a bit of contention online on social media groups about which is the best way to flood and drain a grow bed. 
or even if you need to at all. Um, I personally think uh, flooding and draining grow bed is great because it gives lots of oxygen down there in the media to the bacteria and the roots of the plants so they can thrive. In saying that, you can add a load of oxygen into your sump tank and pump that up to the grow bed, but that's just another power consumption, so I prefer to use something like this, which floods and drains. Now, um, flooding and draining is better. How about how to siphon it? You siphon or a timer or a bell siphon? Well, I think they all work, they all have their merits, and yeah, kudos to whatever works best for you. I personally like the bell siphon, and I've made dozens of them, and I've never really had issues with any of them failing once you know how to tweak them, and I'm not going to go through that here. Uh, you can follow that little link to a bit of a uh, all-in-one bell siphon video that will run through not only how to make them, and also some tips to how to get them running if you're having issues with them. So. I do think they are somewhere where you can save a load of dosh. Now you can go with these PVC jobbies with a snorkel, like this one here. That snorkel just, as you can see, is a little bit above uh, that little cutout down the bottom, so it helps to break the siphon when you're running high volumes of water through your grow beds, like we are here at the moment. So a great little build, nice and cheap if you want to do it that way. Uh, this one over here, as you saw before, is even cheaper again. We have a um, soda water bottle with a same little snorkel attachment just with a, another little uh, grommet on the top allowing a barb fitting to go through and it does exactly the same thing um, creates a siphon costs you pennies and yeah does a fantastic job so i'm really happy with using the bell siphons like i said i run them with no issues if you are having issues check out the video i mentioned before the link will now be down in the description so um suss that out but these guys here um these i've seen them online anywhere up to a hundred bucks here in Australia. Uh, there are some a lot cheaper overseas, but with conversion rates and shipping and all the rest of it, they work out pretty much well the same price at the moment. Now, there's something people have asked me to make in the past, something I might look at doing once we move to the farm and I have a big workshop to work in. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, there is that video you can suss out on how to make them yourself. A nice, easy build. And once you tweak them and understand how they work, they're never going to fail at flooding and draining your bed efficiently. So I do hope these tips and pointers and rules of thumb have helped you folks out who are new to aquaponics. Not only that, you folks who have already have a system, a couple of ideas there might help you make it run more efficiently. Before we go, another quick reminder, I do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide, 1995 US. Links are down in the description and one will pop up at the end. And a huge thanks to everyone who has bought a copy. It helps to support the channel so I can continue making this content. And a huge thanks as well to you folks who just come along to these videos every week. Give them a thumb up and say good day down in the comments section. I really do love chatting with you all and answering your questions down there when I have a couple of minutes spare. And you folks who are supporting the channel through the YouTube membership platform and Farm Your Own Yard patron page. We really do appreciate the support. It's going to buy a couple of tank worths of diesel uh, when we do the big move up to the farm. So thank you very much, folks. And if you've got this far in the video and you haven't subscribed, now's the time to poke that subscribe button and jump onto the bell icon. So hopefully YouTube will give you a notification when videos are uploaded to this channel. By the way, you can always subscribe to our farm channel as well. Bits out the back homestead. Link will pop up somewhere as well. But I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.